50 caliber Browning machine gun. Funnel. Dan Tokar at the Willow Forge in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. Today we're going to do some ball forming uh, using ball bearings to uh, expand some brass. Uh, I need a funnel to fill uh, the reservoir of a small hydraulic uh, machine and I don't happen to have one that uh, has a small enough spout uh, so I'm going to make one out of this uh, 50 caliber uh, Browning machine gun shell casing. Shell casings are very good brass. Uh, you can do a lot with these and uh, I realize that most people uh, don't have this as a resource but uh, you'd be surprised. Having a tray with a selection of ball bearings of increasing sizes is also what you're going to need. The first step is to anneal the neck of the brass. So brass anneals at a dull red and unlike steel actually gets softer if you quench it. So I'm using a fairly soft propane flame because I just want to anneal the neck of this thing. I'm going to heat it up to a dull red and I want it to be nice and even. about like that. Pick it up. Put it in the water. That's now annealed. Now I'm going to take a small four ounce ball peen hammer and the horn of my anvil and just tap Turning the shell casing the whole time that I'm gently tapping because if I hit it too hard, I'll collapse it. All I'm doing is driving it in and reducing the diameter right about where the neck meets the body of the case. People who are used to reloading will say, Dan, you could do that so much easier with a die on a reloading press. And say, yes, if you wanted to spend a day making a special set of dies for your reloading press, you could probably do this very cleanly. But I only want one funnel. It makes no sense to spend a day making tooling to do a job that you're probably never going to do again or do so infrequently that you'll probably misplace the tooling. Misplace the tooling long before you need to do the job again. And I'm tapping gently. Gently, gently. And at some point, the brass gets stiff and springy, and you have to anneal it again. So I'm going to anneal this. Hey, back here annealing the brass again. This is the second annealing.
dull red is all you need. You want it to be even. All the way around. Okay, nice. In the water, out of the water. Back at the horn of the anvil. It's nice and soft now. You want to start back from the end because you very likely will just collapse the end rather than actually getting it to upset and be smaller. So you, you're doing back from it first and then move up to the end and go around to even out that reduction. You can also angle the hammer and tuck in the end It'll actually compress and turn in that end. And that'll make the mouth a little stiffer while you work behind that. Okay, so you can see what we've been doing there. It's actually pulling in the very lip. And now I can go back. I'll try a little heavier hammer now. Just drawing that in. Back to the light hammer. Okay. Now, now, just for comparison, there is the shell as we started and the one that we've currently got. We've already got it to the point where we've reduced the neck quite a bit. Third annealing. Oops, I turned my torch off. As you work the brass, uh, upsetting it, making it a smaller diameter, you're actually driving it up and making it thicker. So the wall thickness is increasing on that, which makes it a little stiffer, as well as the work hardening from hammering on it.
And again, we want it to be nice and even all the way around. Because if you have spots that aren't properly annealed, they won't move. I want all of that to move evenly so it'll be symmetrical. All right, good enough. Put that in there. Cool it off in the water. So, back at the anvil, I'm going to tap in the very end at an angle. Make the mouth a little stiffer. And I'm going to hammer the neck gently with a slightly bigger hammer. Go back to the little hammer and even it out. Yep. And if you get something that's gone a little triangular, you can always put a little rod inside. You can always put a little rod inside to help round that out again, because this has gotten a little tiny bit out of round. So I use one of my center punches that has a nice taper on it to make that round again. And even take the little crease out because I got to the point of having a little crease starting to form and you don't want that all right and then I'm going to bevel that end again just gently this has gotten nice and stiff, and it's now down to being maybe three-eighths of an inch in diameter. You can see the original. And I will even try it on my little plate here and say that it's already at a size that it'll fit that. So what I'm going to do is cut this off. I put it in the vise, put my trusty hacksaw, I think maybe about right there will be nice. End up with that part, and I take a file, and even it out, take the burrs off. No matter how careful you are, unless you're doing it in a lathe, you're never going to cut these things perfectly square. And it really is a help if they're square. But I'm not assuming that all you guys have lathes, so why not? Just do it the simple way with a hacksaw and a file. And then 
I take the burr off the outside. Take the burr off the inside with the sharp edge of the file tang. Just go along and scrape that corner so that there's no... Make little bells that way too. Take all that off. Clean it out carefully with your little finger. Right. Then I use soft paste wax. I take... I take a little bit of the paste wax and rub it on the ball bearing, which is a little bigger than the opening. And I put paste wax on the inside. Well, I just rub it all over the, the shell casing like that. And then my plate here has holes in it, different sizes. The little bit of countersinking on the outside is more so that you don't have a sharp edge and you can put a little bit of wax on that. That will drop in there over the hardy hole in the anvil. And I'll try and keep it straight. And make sure I keep it loose and rotate it a little bit because you want it to be even. Oops, of course the ball pops off. Every now and then I'll make sure that that's loose. Rotate it a little bit. Put the ball back. It is a slippery little ball. You'll begin to notice that the ball is getting driven into and expanding the shell casing. So right now, you can see how much that's expanded. I'll give you an idea compared to the original shell casing. But now what I have to do is even it out and pop the ball out. And I've got a train coming. There are a couple of ways to get the ball out of the, uh, the brass cup. You can stick a rod down in there and punch it out. Or you can gently tap around. And that'll actually expand the brass, which is what you want to do anyway. And the ball will get loose enough to just pop right out of there. I take a rod and just, ah, uh, not quite yet. Need just a little bit more. You can hear it getting loose. It's actually rattling in there. Come on, little ball. The little ball is determined to stay in there. Yeah, loose, loose. Come on. It really has decided it wants to stay in there. Now you have to get the ball out of the piece of brass. 
there's a couple of ways you could push it out from the inside but there's no real good way of holding that so I just take the little hammer and tap and that expands the brass stretches the brass against the ball makes it looser and you wanted that brass to be bigger anyway so that ball is loose but not quite yet all the way There, and you see the ball pops right out. So, again, you can see what we've made progress. We've gone from that to that. And what I have to do now is take all those little funny wrinkles and stuff out out of that part. So, I am going to anneal this again. All right. Kneel this again. I'm going to get that whole top section to a nice, even, dull red. Just enough red that you can see it glowing. All right, put it in the water. And back to forging. All right, so in order to get the wrinkles out of that part, I'm going to take a smaller ball and put some wax on it, lubricate it, put some wax inside this thing, and pop that ball in there, put it in my little holder plate, and I'm going to use a rod to tap on that ball, and then drive the ball down, Just about there. So what that did, as you'll see, it it expanded and took all those wrinkles out. The ball's down there. And since I can just put this down and gently tap on it, that ball comes out nice and easy. Now I'm going to go back to the big ball, because this has been annealed, and see if I can't stretch that a little bit more with some gentle tapping. Yep, getting there. And you see, I'm turning it as I tap. All right, and as I get closer, I'll need my punch because it's below the surface of the funnel. And at some point, you'll feel the resistance of the ball coming up against the plate. So what you've got at this point is the ball is right up against the plate, right there. These little ridges and things, you can actually take off by gently tapping. And this will help loosen the ball. You can see the ball popped. And I put that in there and 
the ball comes out. So you can see that's where we are right now. We've gone from that shell casing to that shape. I'm going to clean up this little bit of roughness here by gently tapping on the high spot and that smooths out the irregularities we've made. Okay, so that's a question now as to whether we can get away with another expansion. We might see if the next biggest ball will start working. I've got a little wax still on my fingers. I put that on there, make sure there's some wax on there. Put that there, and just to see how stiff it is, I'll put it back and just tap gently, keep rotating it, and you'll see that there's a train coming through my backyard, but the ball is expanding. Now that that noisy train has passed, we're showing you how that ball has expanded, and I think it's soft enough that I will risk driving it down the rest of the way. There's still enough stretch left in the brass. And I'm tapping gently and rotating. All right, keeping an eye on all of that, making sure it's all happening right. there. Almost there. All right. And what I can do is take my little hammer, use this thing as a stand, and gently tap on those wrinkles that are forming and drive them back down. Okay. I'm going to see if I can get that out. up to the edge here and I'll tap around the edge to stretch it and that'll help release the ball. Mm. <laughs> yep, getting those things out again sometimes is an adventure. Almost. Come on, little ball. Tight, 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 tight. Woohoo. Now, stretching that last little bit, because sometimes the ball 
it's formed around itself there. Okay, so I popped the ball out. So this is where we are right now, where the opening of that funnel you can see compared to the original cartridge case. It's actually quite a nice little bell. All right, got to anneal it again. Particularly the wide part here, the uh, the stem, uh, the narrow part really is not going to get a lot of work. So, but we want to make sure that the wide mouth is as soft as possible because that's what has to stretch. goes nice dull red evenly all the way around hey okay. all right we're ready for the next ball that ball was the last ball so we get a slightly bigger ball you put a little bit of wax on the ball wax the inside of the uh, brass. Put this back Oop. put this back down right there. Okay. I'm going to tap it gently and rotate. Usually I'm correcting by hammering a little bit off center to bring it back in line. And you have to be careful. As you can see, now that that's annealed, it's upsetting against the plate. So before we go much further, I'm going to pop that out. Get the little ball, the slightly smaller ball that we were just using. You see how much it moves around now. Now, I'm going to put that there and I'm going to take that little ridge out. stiffens up that section so that it's not likely to form again and make it all nice and pretty. All right, I took the little ridge out. Now go back to the slightly bigger ball. Because I'm still expanding, expanding, expanding the opening. Very good. Yep. That's just about there. Very good. Now I can knock the ridges out against this ball.
and I am gently tapping it all the way around to expand it and get it loose on the ball, but also to make it pretty. Alright, and you can see that nice ball shape. I'm going to tap this a little bit. What I should do is put a rod in there. Oh, need a better rod. And this, there is a good rod. I am going to put this rod in here. And that will allow me to straighten out the, uh, the spout just a little bit. A little gentle tapping. You can see we got a nice smooth spout. Now we got the ball out. Let's see. It probably won't tap out, but we'll see. Well, all right. Put that back in and Make it pretty. And I am going to expand this against the ball. Because as I tap, I'm stretching the brass. Which will make it easier to get the ball out. I can hear it rattling a little bit now. Oops. All right. rattling it's rattling but will it come out these balls get pretty tight in there coming out had to loosen it a little bit but this is where we're at we started out with that and we have ended up with that Now I'm going to clean up and polish that. First little cleanup is just to even up the rim because the rim of course has accumulated tiny little dings and dents. And I deburr it. And then I'm going to take it over to the buffing wheel and buff it. My little buffing wheel. Put some compound. That's a hard felt wheel.
You always want to buff in a direction where none of the edges will catch in the wheel. With a hard felt wheel, it's not as likely to happen because the felt is not quite as grabby. But on a loose fabric wheel, they will grab and throw things across the room. And uh, if you're doing something like polishing a knife, it'll actually throw it at your feet. I am just going to make this shiny. Of course, I could just throw it in the tumbler and come back tomorrow. But what fun would that be? Okay, now I'm going to have to take the buffing compound off with some alcohol. Okay, we have a cup full of alcohol, put it in there, swirl it around a little bit. The uh, buffing compound basically has a, a waxy um, binder for the grit, and that waxy binder is what gets uh, all over your work. So you've got to get the wax off. So also we had the wax that we were using to lubricate the inside of the, uh, the work when we were working on it. Working on the work. Let's see how many times we can use the word work in one sentence. Now, if I really wanted to go after this, I could make this much shinier. But that's a one-piece funnel made from a 50 caliber browning shell. Now, let's see if it actually works as a funnel. All right, here's my little hydraulic unit. The dipstick says it's dry. I'm going to put the funnel right there take my hydraulic fluid now let's see how this works yep it's a funnel. So, 50 caliber Browning machine gun, funnel.